Live of the Made by Mumino podcast. My name is Catherine and I'm recording today on Monday the 15th of April in Mönchengladbach in Germany and uh, yeah thank you to anybody who is uh, a returning viewer and a huge welcome to any new people here. Thank you so much for all of the comments and likes and, and, and so on on the last video. It was really really lovely and I really enjoyed reading your comments and chatting to you and responding to those. Yes, um, this is my little corner of the internet to talk about all things knitting related and yarn related and buying yarn <laughs> when I really don't need any more. But I suppose that's the, the same thing that all of us could say. I'm going to start today by talking about what I'm wearing. So this is a lovely uh, raglan tea that I made, uh, when was it? Probably this time last year. Um, anything I talk about, any projects or yarn or yarn shops or anything, I'll always link it below. Uh, but if I forget or I miss something, then then please do message me. I'm more than happy to, to uh, let you know any more details if you need them. But yes, this is uh, the Cloud Tea by JC of Bluebird Pine Shop. And I did this as a test knit for her. Uh, yeah, I think this time last year. And I made it in uh, Knitting for Olive. Um, cotton merino and it's a very very nice lightweight breathable drapey gorgeous yarn to work with and I definitely work with it again although I think I probably should have gone down a size and made the next size down for this oh I've got a bit of a crease there steam that out later it's been folded in a drawer since last summer um but yes this uh this yarn is perfect for, for wearing in the summer. I mean, here it, it typically hovers around the top 20s, early 30s in the summer. Centigrade, sorry. Um, and I find that this yarn is perfectly comfortable to wear in that kind of temperature. Um, yes, I would definitely knit with this again, although I think it probably grows a little bit. I'm not sure if that's because of the cotton content or the... Uh, the merino content but it has grown a little bit um, so probably should have gone down a size uh, when I was knitting this. Um, I'll put in a picture up here of me wearing it. This is the colourway slate and it's it's kind of it, it's not it's a, it's a dull black it's a very very dark grey and uh, it goes with lots of the things that I wear long skirts and things um, and it's definitely a colour I gravitate towards, as you will see from, from my other finished objects today. Uh, yeah, so I've had a busy couple of weeks um, doing lots of bits and pieces, trying to get outside as much as possible now that the weather is, uh, you know, definitely spring is here. I've been getting outside and doing some work, planting bits and pieces on my balcony. We don't have a garden here. Um, but I do have a, a pretty sizable balcony and I have lots of window boxes and pots and things and I grow tomatoes and uh, so other other plants, uh, uh, herbs and things out on the balcony. Um, although I don't think I'll grow tomatoes this year. I think we're probably planning on going away quite a lot over the summer. So I don't really want the tie of worrying about 30 degree heat and not being able to water my tomatoes. <laughs> anyway, I digress. As I said earlier, this is a knitting podcast. However, I do go off on tangents fairly regularly. I apologise in advance. Um, if you're interested in a particular part or you want to skip on, I always put chapters in as well. Um, so feel free to use those uh, as, you, as you will. Finished objects. Today there are three finished objects talk about the most dull one first. I always keep a pair of socks in my, well, a sock project in my handbag and I've just finished um, this one. This is a pair of, could you call two by two rib socks vanilla? I suppose so. I don't use a pattern for this, I just use a, a, a recipe that I've it's not even a recipe, it's just how I make socks. Um, it's a 64 stitch cast on. I do a two by two rib for 60 rounds. Then I do a heel flap and gusset, picking up 17 stitches down the side. And then I do 60 stitches and a nice rounded toe that I kitchener at the end. It's just 
how I always make socks for myself. But this yarn is special though. This is Alpaca Socks, again, linked below, which is a Lang yarn. And I can't remember what the makeup is of this, but I think it's, I haven't got the, the, the band here. I'll put it down below, but I'm pretty sure it's a 7030 Alpaca. Do you know what? I'm just gonna look it up whilst I'm talking to you. Oh, psh, I'll put it in below, it's fine. Anywho. <laughs> This sock yarn, I've used it a couple of times. It's quite slippery to work with, but it's definitely worth it. It makes these gorgeous, lightweight, soft, fluffy, warm, delightful socks. They're just, oh, so gorgeous. I know it's really boring because they're gray, but they are lovely. So yes pair of socks i'm working on another pair of socks at the moment but they're another gift so i'll probably um won't show those until they've been gifted to the person although they won't be gifted for quite a while hmm i'll probably show them to you next time when they're a bit more along okay that was the first finished object a pair of socks <laughs> uh the next finished object finished object is a test knit a finished test knit and this is a cowl. The yarn producer Mill uh, John Arben in the UK do an annual, as I, I think I talked about it in my last podcast. And in that annual, they include uh, usually six, seven, eight patterns. Um, and uh, for their next episode, episode, what's the word I'm looking for? Issue, that's the word I'm looking for. The next issue, they were looking for testers for the patterns. And uh, yeah, I thought, why not go for it? This was actually designed by, oh, you can see where the crease is, where I blocked it there. <laughs> this was designed by Marie Wallen for John Arben. And the pattern came with suggestions for color palette. Um, and the suggestions were from the Harvest Hughes four ply range from John Arben themselves, and also from Marie Wallen's British Breeds. So there were three options for sizes, small, medium, and large. This is the medium one. The large or long version is very, very long. It's double this, um, so it can wrap around your neck twice. Um, and it came with two different suggestions for how to manage the colours. So this is the full version, which is 14 different colours, but there's also an option for four colours or a reduced palette for four or five colours, which I might also give a go as well, have a go at that too. I didn't just use John Arben for this cowl. I um, was trying to keep the cost down a little bit and substitute in yarns where I had them that were an appropriate colour. So one or two of these colours are um, woolly knit British four ply cones. Um, so yes, that is my finished cowl. I was a bit worried while I was knitting it because the um, ribbing on the edge was flipping up, but it seems to be absolutely fine since it's been blocked. And it's such a really lightweight, beautiful cowl. In fact, I'll show you the inside as well. See my floats. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks rather fabulous from the inside as well. I went with uh, John Arben's suggestion for the full colour palette because I've never done such complex colour work before involving so many different colours and I just didn't feel confident selecting a full colour palette of 14 colours and thinking that they'd all go together and working out how it would look and, and so on. But the way that it's done is very, very clever. So there's this floral motif that runs through it and they achieve this by always having a light and a dark contrast color together for each chart. So as long as you always have the flower motif part in the light color, you'll be able to see the pattern. It's very clever. I was thinking that I might do this in a variety of pink tones. That might look rather nice with a bit of, bit of cream in it for interest. Um, but yeah, I finished that 
a week or so ago, put some pictures up on Instagram as well if you're interested. Oh, that reminds me, if you want to follow me on social media, I'm just on Instagram as made by, no, what am I on Instagram? Mumino, just Mumino on, on Instagram. <laughs> Mumino on uh, on Ravelry if you want to have a look at my uh, my project pages or whatever over there. In fact, if you're interested in all of the different yarns that I used for this, have a look at my project page on Ravelry um, because it gives a full breakdown with all of the detailed weights and, and everything that I that I used for this project. But I'm very happy with the outcome. It's very nice. Um, I would definitely make one of these as a, a gift knit for somebody as well. It wasn't uh, wasn't too arduous and it was a nice, fun, engaging knit without being super complicated. Okay, let's move on to my next finished object, which is another test knit. And this one is for Kaedri and is the Utori sweater. So I should have put this on really. I finished it. I'm so happy with this. Uh, I will put some footage of me wearing it up there. I don't know why I didn't wear this today. Never mind. <laughs> Bit daft. This is the Utori sweater from Caredry, and it flew off my needles. It absolutely flew off my needles. And I loved making this. It was one of those knits where as soon as you see it and as soon as you start making it, you realise that you want to wear this. This is no longer a process knit. This is a, I, I want to wear this. I want to finish this and I want to wear it. Um, yeah, I enjoyed every part of this knit and it was a really nicely constructed pattern. Really interesting details with fluff. <laughs> I've already worn this. <laughs> Um, I made this in Knitting for Olive, uh, pure silk, 100% pure silk. How many people have got a pure silk jumper? I feel very, very, uh, very lucky, <laughs> very luxurious. Um, in fact, I'm going to put this on just one second. So it's on, I'm back. I didn't wear it today because it's a little bit cooler and quite windy outside and I'm planning on going out for a wander, but out for a walk as soon as I finish doing this so it's not quite warm enough but i am so happy with this it was lovely and warm yesterday so i went out with my partner to go and take some pictures of, of the of this finished um garment and i just felt a million dollars when i was wearing it um it was such uh, i knew exactly how this jumper was going to fit into my wardrobe and i love the fabric i really love the pattern it gave me real crochet and kind of 90s vibes, which I absolutely loved as well. Um, and I can't recommend this pattern enough. I'm not sure when um, she's going to release it, but uh, keep an eye on her Instagram. I'll, I'll, I'll link, I'll, I'll put a link to her below um, because it's just lovely. She made it in Pasquale um, Camel DK, which also looks like a really gorgeous option. Um, and I think I might be tempted to make another version using that yarn, maybe in a cream or an off-white, something like that. Um, because yeah, this is just going to be perfect for the summer. Absolutely love it. Really, really, uh, absolutely thrilled with this. <laughs> Tickled. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said, this is made for, uh, made with Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. And all the details are on um, my Ravelry page. It's really lightweight. I think the final total was about 470, 480 grams um, of, of silk. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's well worth it. It's the first time I've actually completed a garment using this. This yarn actually started out life as a lento that I started making but the yarn did not fit the pattern at all. I don't know what I was thinking. The gauge was totally, totally, totally wrong. I was looking for something that had this kind of mesh effect. I was trying to force it with the wrong uh, yarn for the wrong pattern. Um, this was definitely a much better option. But I can just see this summer evenings at barbecues when it's hot and you just need a little extra layer in the evening. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure when this is going to come out, but keep an eye on Kedri's Instagram. Um, 
for the uh, release date. I think the deadline for the test knit is the 26th of May. So I imagine it won't be too long after that that the pattern comes out. Um, but yes, absolutely thrilled with this. Really happy with it. It was a super fast knit. I couldn't put it down, got totally distracted by it. <laughs> So some of my other um, FOs didn't get much of a look in, unfortunately, because I was enjoying knitting on this so much. But yes, that's my uh, first finished, or well, no, third finished object. I don't know what I'm trying to say today. Never mind. Okay, I'm just going to go and get changed because I'm a bit cold. So there's a definite theme, knitting for olive in dark, almost black colours. As I said, this one was knitting for olive, um, cotton merino in slate and the other jumper that I just showed you, the Yutori, was knitting for all of pure silk in coal. I do like knitting things in dark colours, <laughs> which is not great for my eyes at all. I do know that. But uh, but yes, that brings me nicely onto my uh, whips uh, that I've got on the needles at the moment. And the first one being one that you've seen before. I still haven't finished it. I'll get there. Also another dark yarn. Hence why it's taken me so long. Also got distracted by the last one. But yes, this is the Botanics shawl. Still growing, still progressing. The last time I spoke to you, I was down here. So I've done that in two weeks. Considering I finished a couple of objects, um, cast on and finished a couple of objects. I don't think that's too bad going, to be honest. But yes, this is for my partner. And all the yarn details are below. I've talked about it quite a lot in my previous episodes, so I won't do so now. But um, I've been working on this for the last couple of evenings just to try and progress it along a little bit because it'd be nice to get it finished. I've got, I think, two more of these repeats to do before I move on to the straight section. So th this is done with mosaic knitting to get this effect. And then uh, once you finish the increases that are in the pattern, um, there's a part that's just alternate uh, contrast colour and main colour um, for about 10 rows, I think. So, um, yeah, in fact, if I show you, I'll fold that over so you can't see the details. So that's on the pattern. You can see that straight section, or plain section, I should say, after the mosaic knitting part. Yes, so I think I've got, yeah, two, or maybe three. I might do three to go to make it a little bit bigger before I start on the plain section. We shall see how enthusiastic I'm feeling when I get there. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm working on mainly at the moment. I don't actually have, other than a pair of socks that are being, um, that are living in my handbag at the moment, any other knitting on my needles but I do have a couple of planned knits on my needles. <gasps> That's not true at all. What am I talking about? I'm... The other thing that I have on my needles that's really at very, very early stages is <laughs> the ribbing of a cardigan. <laughs> this is the Sestaria cardigan. And as you can see, all I've done is the ribbing and I've started doing a little bit of the chart. If I show you the pattern, I'll show you the picture of the pattern. As I mentioned in my last episode, it's the pattern is in this book. This lovely Brazilian designer. It's such a pretty cardigan this one here. Oh, my nails match. <laughs> I like to have a project that kind of sits and I can pick up when I feel like it. And if it, it's, it's something I don't feel rushed to do. I probably won't wear this pattern until next season though. I'm making it with, uh, well, until the autumn anyway. So I'm making it with a woolly knit British cone. And this is in the colourway Cinnamon. It's a really gorgeous colour. 
So I'm holding this double <clears throat> and I've used this yarn oh, many, many, many times and I just really enjoy the fabric it makes when it's held double. I find that when the, uh, when the garment's finished, it pills like crazy to begin with. You depill it and then never need to do anything to it ever again. It's a very hard wearing, reliable, keeps its shape um, yarn. Not the softest in the world, but strangely all of the colorways um, have feel slightly different. So this is one of, I'd say, one of the medium softness ones. But it's an absolutely beautiful colour. I used this in my uh, John Arban cowl test knit as well. It's a really lovely colour. In fact, that's what made me think of doing this cardigan. I pulled out this colour to uh, to add to the cowl. So I'm going to sneeze. Am I going to sneeze? No, maybe. Anyway, I pulled out this <laughs> this colour to go with the cowl, and I thought. I bought this originally to be a cardigan and this needs to be a cardigan. Um, therefore it was cast on. And it's living in this project bag that I picked up in Norway. And it will be a very long term, slow, enjoyable process knit with those nice cables going up the front. And I'm in no rush to have the, the finished garment. So I won't show it to you very often, just if I make any significant progress on it. That's that. And other than a pair of socks in my handbag, I don't have anything else on the needles at the moment. <clears throat> I am gonna sneeze. I thought as I'd pause to sneeze anyway, I might as well grab my socks from my handbag. So um, Steffi, if you're watching, skip to the next chapter please because uh, unless you don't care about having a surprise <laughs> i knit a pair of socks for my friend uh, steffi every year for her birthday her birthday's not for ages but i thought i'd get them done and her favorite color is purple and i saw this yarn and i couldn't resist how cute is that i'm just making a vanilla sock for her slightly longer leg than i do for myself because she's got slightly longer legs and uh, slightly longer feet so just making a nice two by two rib again for her. I find that when I'm gift knitting socks, a rib always works really nicely because it, it gives you a little bit more um, wiggle room in terms of uh, fitting and everything. I do recommend thinking about that if you're, uh, if you're gift knitting socks for people. Uh, the main color is this, which is just a standard sock yarn from Lana Grosser. And here's the label. That's what it's going to knit up as. You've already seen that. And this is 75% wool, 25% polyamide. And uh, it's machine washable because, bless her, Steffi does put her socks in the washing machine. <laughs> I was slightly horrified when she told me that. But then I thought loads of people put their socks in the washing machine. The crazy sock lady always says she puts her socks in the washing machine so maybe I should just be brave and put mine in too but uh yeah anyway so that's the main color <laughs> and this absolutely gorgeous contrast color this is a uh, Yavol sock wool again that you've you've seen me use before it comes in these gorgeous little 50 gram skeins and it's 75% uh, wool 25% polyamide oh it's blowing out a little bit there the light's coming around a bit and they, it's a bit boring. They don't have colour names. They've just got colour numbers. And this one's 83.0246. Bit unimaginative. There we go. Oh, I didn't say the colourway for this one. This one doesn't have a name either. It's 2965. And I'm knitting them on my Addy Crazy Trios again. Because these live in my handbag. And... Uh, yeah, sometimes when I'm on planes and things, I like to knit on these because they're bamboo, so I don't have any problems with them going through security. Don't risk losing a set of nine inch circular chagos, which would be very sad. <laughs> so yes, that's that. My sock, handbag knitting. Okay, 
that's all of my whips that I'm working on at the moment. Um, in terms of other things that I'm planning on casting on in the not too distant future, one is the Titty Gaga socks from Nancy Wheeler. Um, Nancy has a podcast, which I'll link below, Knit, Sip, Happy, and she um, periodically designs a, a, pat a sock pattern that uh, the, for, for which the proceeds will go to charity for breast cancer research. And I purchased her most recent one last week. Um, and I believe she's raised about 4,000 Canadian dollars for uh, breast cancer research in Canada, which is absolutely fantastic. If I really want to cast those on. I'll put a picture up here if I haven't already done so. So I just need to pick out some yarn from my stash to, uh, to cast those on. Um, yes, uh, anything else? Oh, and also um, Liner Magazine are doing a Lento Cal at the moment. And as my um, knitting for Olive Silk was originally a, um, a Lento that I ended up ripping out, I thought, you know what, I still really, really like to make a Lento. It's a really nice pattern. It's a really lovely gauge. I'll just use different yarn for it. And I was uh, rearranging my stash uh, over the weekend and I came across some indie dyed mohair that I picked up when I was over on the Dutch coast, uh, I think last year. But this is from an indie dyer called, I'm sorry, I'm sorry any Dutch people watching, Blij dat ik, ik pai, Blij dat ik pai is the name. I did Google it and I think it means something along the lines of happy knitting <laughs> or happiness through knitting or something like that. Um, but this lady uh, that I bought it from had a gorgeous little shop over on the Dutch coast and I couldn't resist. So I picked up two skeins of this. And uh, it's 72% kid mohair, 28% silk and it's 420 meters per 50 grams. So I've got 100 grams of this, which is more than enough. Well, about bang on to make a lento. And I'll hold it with, I've got some Holst Super Soft in a dark green color. I think it's in Tundra or Cossack, I think is the colorway. But I also have a complete cone of dark green um, woolly knit uh, British four ply as well. So I'll probably hold it with one of those two and uh, cast on a lento for myself at some point, and now I have fluff in my mouth. Mm, excuse me, blech. <laughs> I think that would be really cute. That'd be really nice. So I might swatch that up and uh, slowly make myself a lento as well. That'd be good car knitting too. So future plans, a lento I think might be in my future. The other thing that's definitely in my future is another test knit. So I mentioned at the beginning, this t-shirt that I'm wearing is from JC at Bluebird Pine Shop. And uh, this was a test knit as well. And she put out another test knit call and I applied. And this is for a tank. Oh, that's not the best picture. There we go. This is for the Costa tank. In fact, why don't I just show you the whole front? That would make a lot more sense. <laughs> Costa tank and it's got a really cute little folded pico edge it's really nice I thought that would be perfect for wearing under shirts and um, even over a long sleeve or something in the summer um, when I'm doing a test knit I tend to print out um, the uh, the pattern so that I can make notes on it as I go along um, I don't tend to do that with other patterns that I'm working on but yeah, JC sent the pattern out at the end of last week and she uses a DK weight cotton drops bell, which is 120 grams per, sorry, 120 meters per 50 grams or 131 yards. Um, and I've got something that's quite a similar gauge or weight. This is drops saffron. If I'm honest, I thought I had Drops Bell in my stash, but it was this that I was thinking of. 
Um, and this is just 100% cotton, whereas I think the Belle is a, yeah, it's a cotton viscose linen blend, which to be honest, I'd probably prefer. But this is just 100% cotton. It's a really lovely colour. This is in sea green, which is colour 63, I think. Do, do, do. Yes, colour 63, sea green. And the weight is 160 metres per 50 grams. So it's slightly, slightly lighter weight. So I'm going to see if I can get gauge with this. If I can't get gauge, I'll do a gauge swatch later on. If I can't get gauge, I will... Um, pick up something else. Some of the people in the task group were talking about uh, Hulse Coast, I think. Uh, so I might give that a go. Um, but I think I can probably make this work. From my last te test knit I did for JC, she has quite a tight knitting gauge. I'm, I'm much looser than she is. So I'm hoping that if I go down a needle size, that I should get gauge with this. Does that work? Oh God. Gauge maths, nine, uh, uh, Monday morning. I'll see how it goes. I'll let you know in the next one <laughs> whether or not it worked out. But I've got loads of this, so I'm really hoping this works. I think I've got about eight, nine balls of it all together, which is more than enough to make a tank top. Um, so yeah, I'm really hoping that that works because this is such a gorgeous colour and it will go with lots of things in my wardrobe. And it's not black. <laughs> which is nice difference. <laughs> That's it for uh, future knitting plans at the moment. Um, but yeah, the rest of what I want to talk about is uh, sort of yarn show related and acquisition related. I went to a couple of different things over the last couple of weeks. The first of which was a a spring festival, an Easter festival on Easter Sunday. So the, a, a local schloss, um, What's it? it's not a castle it's a stately home a local stately home that we go to it's got some really lovely gardens that I like to go and walk around uh, with my partner they do a big Christmas market there over the advent season but they also do other um, uh, markets and events all throughout the year and one of which is the spring market so we went on Easter Sunday and uh, I'll put some footage in uh, in at the end of, uh, of uh, no I'll put it in here So as you saw in that footage, I turned around the corner and saw some alpacas. And of course, what do you get from alpacas? You get yarn. <laughs> so I bought yarn. How gorgeous is that colour? It's so lovely. Oh, I love this colour so much. This is definitely a Catherine colour. This is a baby alpaca and it's in the colourway avocado. And that is the, I don't know if you can see that. Apu Kuntu. I'm not sure where it's made even. I just saw the colour on it, it needed to come home with me. I think it's from Peru, but I don't really want to take the label off, the information's on the inside. Anyway, uh, colourway av avocado. Yes, made in Peru. It's not a brand that I've ever heard of, but I couldn't resist. If you go somewhere and there's a little stall selling a bit of bit of yarn, I mean, it'd be rude not to, right? So um, my partner and I had a lovely time at the Spring Festival. We had a really nice wander around, had a nice um, Flammkuchen, which is, I suppose, like German pizza. It's a really thin, very crispy, dough base uh, it's not like a, a thick crust or anything at all it's, it's more like a, a chapati kind of thickness but but crispier and then on the top of that you can have basically any toppings you want so um we normally go for like onions and cheese and stuff like that so uh, we had yeah we had a really really nice day and yes got some yarn i do have a, a definite tendency to gravitate towards green as well I think looking at what I bought but anyway I was at my uh local knitting shop where I go to a, a, a yarn um or oh, sorry 
local yarn shop where I go to a knitting group most Fridays, well some Fridays, I hadn't been for quite a while, but I popped in on Friday and the owner of the shop, uh, Iris, she just dropped into conversation that there was a yarn show going on not too far away, about an hour and a half away in Tilburg in the Netherlands. Um, we found ourselves at a loose end on Saturday morning and we thought, yeah, let's go. My, my, my partner definitely enabled me to to, to go to this, to go to another yarn show. And I'm really, really happy that, that we did. I'll put in some footage at the end, um, but I'll just show you what I, uh, what I picked up there. First thing, my partner bought me this, Harris Tweed project bag. How gorgeous. So, um, Oh gosh, it's blowing out quite a lot there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody else is a, a sort of a, a person who doesn't live in their home country, but if you hear somebody speaking your native language, you just go and kind of make a beeline for it. I, I see people doing it to me sometimes when I'm out and about and I'm speaking English. Somebody will kind of go, oh, they're speaking English. Um, but yeah, when we were walking around the yarn show, I heard this gorgeous Glaswegian accent and uh, made a beeline for this gentleman's stall and he had the most gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn, saturated, beautiful colours um, and I could have walked away with all of it but he was also selling these um, project bags and uh, so yeah my partner bought me that and also bought this <laughs> this is from the same place so the wee yarn company such a cute sheep on the front there and how amazing is that this is the colorway Guinan, which um i was looking at it on the way home in the car and i was like how do you say this i was googling it i was gonna google it and it's like pronunciation or google translate or whatever i said how on earth do you pronounce that and of course guinan from star trek the next generation uh whoopi goldberg's character <laughs> of course it is because she she her character wears lots of kind of purples and and really kind of interesting strong colors like this but anyway this is so gorgeous my partner loves his muscle for a hats and uh, every now and again, he'll see some yarn when we're out and about. And it's usually very, very bright um, uh, yarn of, of some description or another. Uh, he's just got strict instructions. It must be four ply sock yarn. Other than that, he can go crazy. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so he's requested another muscle bra hat with, with this. This base is the squirm sock base. Now I need to look this up, but I'm pretty sure that squirm sock is an undercover otter base um in which case happy happy days when i win a chicken dinner but this is 80 percent merino and 20 percent nylon and i know this is going to knit up beautifully and i'm i really want to start knitting this now anyway distracted so that's that i bought that and bought that how cute also I picked up some minis because I fancy starting another scrappy blanket. Oh gosh, I'm blowing out really badly. So I picked up some really cute minis. And this is from a company called Bad Katu. You see that on there? Not really. Bad Katu Yarns. That's her little logo there. And these are just 20 gram minis of 100% BFL, Blue Faced, Blue Faced Leicester. I'm not sure what kind of blanket I'm gonna make, but I wanted to mix these in with my, um, all of my leftover sock yarn uh, to make something. I might even make another habitation throw. We'll see, not sure. It'd be nice to have a blanket. If anybody's got any ideas, actually, I'd be really grateful because I'd like to make um, a knitted blanket. I can't crochet. I, I have tried to learn and maybe I'll maybe I'll revisit it. But I would like to knit a blanket over the summer. Therefore, 
it needs to be in bits that get assembled later because it'll just be too hot to sit and knit a blanket over the summer. But I want something that I can just pick up that's small and make like dishcloth sized parts that then go together to make a big blanket. Um, so if anybody's got any ideas for a pattern, I'd be really, really grateful because I'm uh, I'm at a loss. Unless I make a sort of a cosy memories blanket or something and then just sew all the squares. That would be horrible to sew all the squares together. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I need to crochet, don't I? I need to learn to crochet. There's no other answer. <sighs> okay. <laughs> So if there's no ideas for patterns, if anybody has any ideas for um, uh, crochet uh, tutorials, <laughs> give me a show. Crochet tutorials for people who knit English style. I'm a thrower. I'm not a continental knitter. And I think that's where the problem is. I tension my yarn on my right hand. So I'm not used to tensioning on my left. And it just, it's like driving on the wrong side of the road for me. It just throws me for six and I can't. I can't get my head around what I need to do with my hands. So uh, I think that's where the problem is. If anybody has any ideas for tutorials, um, give me a shout. Maybe I'll learn to crochet, we shall see. So my purchases, the other thing that happened, and I will insert some footage at the end. I had a go on a spinning wheel for the first time in my life and I fell in love. It was, uh, so as as you may have seen if you've watched the first episode of this uh this my podcasts um i bought myself a drop spindle and a selection of different uh fibers to have a go in preparation for a uh a drop spindling class that i'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks with my mum uh, and I haven't touched it yet because I wasn't really feeling too confident and I wanted to go to the class first um, rather than waste the fibre. Um, and the, the purpose of learning to drop spindle was to see if I liked the process of spinning um, and then maybe sort of branching out and getting myself a, an actual spinning wheel at some point. But it's quite a big investment. They're not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but anyway, the uh, the yarn show that we went to on Saturday in Tilburg was it was quite quiet actually on the Saturday, and I was able to um, sit down and chat to the uh, the people there who were selling and demonstrating spinning wheels. So the name of the company is Woolworks, and this is over in the Netherlands. And the lovely gentleman who I spoke to for ages, I must have been there for at least 20 minutes, if not longer, um, was Andre. And he was just so helpful. He explained the, all the process, how it works, the different types of tension, how that related then to the, the, the machine I was sitting in front of, um, things to think about when I was uh, you know, thinking about buying a, um, a, a, a spinning wheel. I keep wanting to say sewing machine. And then he let me have a go and I messed up, messed up his bobbin, but it was fine. Oh my goodness. It was, it was so much fun. I was terrible. Well, I wasn't terrible, but I couldn't, I didn't make usable yarn or well, not for anything. Anyway, if you've, if you've done any spinning before, you know what, I, what I'm talking about. But I knew that I wanted to learn how to do that. I thought if I persevere, this is something that's totally doable. Um, my partner also had a go. In his spare time, he's a, he's a drummer, um, a really good drummer. So he's used to doing two things at the same time, you know, different things with his hands and his feet at the same time. And, and he was he was really good, actually. He was quite a natural. Um, <clears throat> but I'm definitely toying with the idea of, of getting a, a spinning wheel for myself in the not too distant future. Um, it's just, uh, yeah. I think that it's something I could probably teach myself to do as well. I, I fully accept that the first kilo or so of yarn I'm gonna, I make is going to be for rather dubious, useless quality. Maybe it could be used for a wall hanging or some sort of weaving or something, I don't know. But anyway, um, but yeah, I'm really, really tempted. There's a new brand, uh, well, new to me anyway, 
brand of um, spinning wheel that they were demonstrating there amongst others. It's a, uh, I believe the people who make Loué um, spinning wheels and, and uh, accoutrements, the owner's daughter has set up her own company. I think that's what the connection is. And it's called Loyan. So it's another Dutch company. And they make these rather cool little wheels. So I'm thinking of getting one that comes with a carrying case. It's completely foldable and portable. So that if I'm going to my local spinning group, because there's a spinning group locally, to, local to me, um, I know a few of the people who go there. And I thought oh, that would be really handy to take to and from, from there. The, the wheel comes with uh, a lazy Kate and four bobbins in total. It's Irish tension. And um, they also use a Dutch tension thing uh, on it, which was really interesting. I hadn't seen it before. Not that I know anything about spinning, so it's unlikely. But anyway, <laughs> so in the hole that the um, <clears throat> the, uh, the the the, the fibre goes into onto the bobbin, they place a sort of a plastic grommet that then guides the yarn in the direction that you're spinning, so that it makes sure that all the tension is going in one direction. It was just really really clever. Um, and I do regret not just buying one instantly, but, you know, it's, it's not an insignificant amount of money. So I thought I'd go away and think about it. It's going to take a lot of self-restraint because I'm going to another yarn show with my mum in a couple of weeks where I'm doing the, um, the, the, the drop spindling course. And I know that one of the suppliers there sells the, this brand. I looked it up. And it's going to take a lot of self-restraint not to just purchase one there. But I need to keep telling myself, Catherine, you need to get on an airplane with this. You only have hand luggage. Be sensible. <laughs> but I think I think there's going to be a spinning wheel in my not too distant future. Right. I think that's it for today. <laughs> I think I've rambled on at you for long enough. Um, yeah. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be fairly busy. And uh, now that the weather's uh, turning for the better here in the Northern Hemisphere, I think I'm going to be out and about a bit more than usual. And um, as I said, I'm traveling back to the UK in a couple of weeks um, to go and spend a long weekend with my parents and go to a, a yarn show, going to Wonderwall with, uh, with my mum. Uh, which I'm really looking forward to. I don't go home very often and it's uh, it's a it's a real treat when I do. I tend to try and time it around something something else that's going on, a birthday or something. But this time, we thought we'd go to a yarn festival together. Um, but yeah, so the next time you speak to me, it'll be post that, or next time I speak to you anyway, it'll be post that trip. Um, I might even make the episode whilst I'm in Wales. We shall see. We shall see. See how it goes. See if I take my laptop with me. Okay, um, thank you so much for being with me here today. I'm not sure how long it is because I've stopped and started a few times. Um, I will insert some footage now of the uh, the yarn festival, the yarn show that I went to in Tilburg. And thank you so much for spending your time with me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks.